Well, good afternoon. You're very welcome to this NRAS Live, which is being recorded as an adjunct to the NRAS Live, which was originally recorded on the 27th of September on the subject of the new British Society for Rheumatology guidelines in pregnancy and breastfeeding. It's important to say that anyone listening back to this recording on the 19th of October, that the guidelines have changed quite considerably and anyone with inflammatory arthritis who is considering getting pregnant for the first time or wanting to expand their family, do watch this NRAS live from the 27th of September and you will find the recording from today, 19th of October, with Louise from Dublin and I'm going to ask Louise to introduce herself in just a moment and that of the 27th of September with the rest of the guidelines panel on the following NRAS social media channels. So that's YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter. Now on that evening of the 27th of September, we heard from guidelines author, Professor Ian Giles, patient mum, Katie Pierce, researcher Kate Duig and Professor Kimmy Heyrich from the University of Manchester, who are conducting a clinical trial in pregnancy in women with inflammatory arthritis, and we were to have heard from nurse specialist Louise Moore from Dublin, who was also on the guidelines working group. But sadly, she was unable to present as she suffered a power cut that evening. So we've invited Louise back to record her presentation and have the opportunity to ask her some questions, which can be watched back in tandem with the recording from the 27th. So without further preamble, let me say welcome, Louise. And I sincerely hope that, hope that Storm Babette, which is raging around <laughs> Scotland at the moment, is far away from Dublin this afternoon. <laughs> so would you just yeah. like to introduce yourself and get straight into your presentation? Perfect. OK. Hello, everybody. My name is Louise Moore and I work as a, a registered advanced nurse practitioner here in rheumatology. And I have 30 years of rheumatology experience and has, have definitely seen sort of over those 30 years, the changes in how we care for women with rheumatic disease. And I suppose that's sort of what I want to share with you. And I suppose highlight as well um, the, um, and support the other presentations that have been delivered. So without further ado, I'm just gonna share my screen. And I always hope that this works. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so, so I've, I was asked to have a look at the nursing role in the management of women with rheumatic, uh, with rheumatoid arthritis and who, who have reproductive health needs. And I suppose I wanted to highlight, I suppose, and even the change that has occurred with how we care for women um, who are living with chronic disease. And certainly, you know, at the beginning of my career in the last century, um, they we tended to have a one size fit all with um, every, every stage of life. However, I think sort of certainly in the last decade, we seem to, we, we it appears that we are getting more structured and more focused on supporting women at different stages um, along their life. So, you know, when, whenever a patient is diagnosed, whether they're diagnosed as a child or at, at whatever stage in life, they remain a rheumatology patient on, on the whole way through until they die. So I suppose it, it's important that we as rheumatology clinicians are responsive to people's um, healthcare needs along their life journey. And I suppose that sort of is the focus and the interest of rheumatology uh, reproductive care. So back in 2013, I did my master's by research and uh, some of our findings um, from the quality, quantitative part of our research, which was looking at surveying our rheumatology uh, clinicians, so that's both nurses and uh, rheumatologists, uh, um, about their knowledge of, around um, rheumatology care during each phase of reproduction. However, it was very clear in um, from um, the findings from that phase of the study that there certainly was a discrepancy in knowledge about rheumatology care during each phase of reproduction. Certainly there at that stage, there has been there, there was much discrepancy around medication management, when to stop medications, when to start medications, and also in the, in the key area of 
how care should be provided um, and, you know, whether that is best provided with in, in the multidisciplinary team, how are we accessing our obstetric colleagues? And certainly here in Ireland, and I can um, assume in other parts of the world, uh, rheumatology cares tended to work in isolation, in a silo. However, certainly in the last decade, there has been a big push into us working together in, in managing women who are living with rheumatic disease during this, this, this rep their reproductive years. What was very interesting was the qualitative part of the study, which um, was an opportunity to um, meet with patients um, and to interview patients about their experience of how we as rheumatology clinicians were delivering care. So women certainly were um, dissatisfied with the varying approaches to care and information even within each centre. So it was very dependent on who met the patient. So it might be you might be meeting your nurse specialist today and you might be meeting your uh, rheumatologist the next day. And there seem to be varying approaches to how, to, uh, certainly around medication management and how best to care for these women. There was also no visible evidence of shared care amongst rheumatology and obstetric colleagues. And what really, I suppose, has um, what was highlighted was in the busy medical clinics, there certainly was a, a lack of opportunity to discuss pregnancy plans. And this is a time when women came to clinic, maybe with this particular question that they wanted to address, but felt uncomfortable in the in the, the layout of the clinic or the business of the clinic to discuss that with their clinicians. So that obviously uh, needed to change. And the women's main concerns and was, you know, how their, their ability to conceive, how their arthritis may impact on their pregnancy and vice versa, the consequences of medication management, and what to do if a plan, if a, if a flare occurs, what do I do then? Um, uh, women also wondered whether um, they, how their baby may be delivered. There had, there was um, a myth that women with rheumatic disease would uh, would be more, uh, would, would need to deliver by cesarean section. However, that is actually not the case, and uh, a delivery mode is certainly determined by your obstetric um, course as opposed to your rheumatology course in the main. And um, women also were worried about their ability to care for their newborn and who to access when they run into trouble and how how do I make contact? Because giving somebody an appoint, appointment for three months time is not um, a, is, is not helpful when you have a flare four weeks after you have been seen by your uh, rheumatologist. So, again, I suppose what has really helped with our um, with our, uh, our our guidance and and how we approach um, reproductive healthcare is the, is the um, publishing of the second uh, set of guidelines from BSR in relation to uh, prescribing drugs in pregnancy and breastfeeding. Um, I suppose they have made clinicians feel more secure about the advice that they are given. Um, and they have certainly led the way in guiding how we should, um, I suppose, deliver care. So one of the generic recommendations, which I'm sort of always draw to the attention of my own clinicians, um, is that preconceptual counselling, you know, should be addressed by all healthcare professionals, with referral to professionals with relevant expertise as appropriate, to optimise disease control before pregnancy with advice on timing of pregnancy and drug therapy uh, during and after pregnancy, including contraception. Now, I have interpreted this in the broadest sense in that I, I see this preconceptual time as an opportunity where um, we can look at all aspects of 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 women's health of women's health um, around pregnancy, not only just about the medication management piece, which is really really important, but also the other pieces of um, care that um, and advice that we need to to all be aware of around pregnancy. So again. Some of the the, the, the documents that I would use in practice, and certainly I have dipped in and out of the NHS um, uh, 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 
website um, would be the general information that we shouldn't forget about is that the general information around trying for a baby. So again, we have our, in Ireland, we have the HSC, um, which is similar to the NHS. So there are two lovely links there to um, a general information for any woman considering a pregnancy, because sometimes in rheumatology, we tend to just focus on the medication piece. However, you know, making sure that you're taking folic acid and um, uh, being as fit as possible for pregnancy, healthy eating, um, uh, discontinuing smoking, all these other aspects have to be considered as well, because, you know, the ultimate goal for uh, the woman and for the team that are caring for is that this woman will become pregnant and will have um, a, a safe and healthy pregnancy. Um, this I found was very interesting, and I, and I have referred to this quite a lot in, um, in 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 writings that I'm undertaking at the moment. Is making the case for preconception health. So this is a, a, a from Public Health England from 2018, and really this suggests that addressing preconceptual health in this way can lead to significant improvements for maternal and in infant outcomes. So in theory, if you have a healthy mom then in theory, you know, she's able to care for her baby and um, the whole way through baby will have, you know, will, will have normal experience of going to school, you know, normal adolescence and, you know, the, the, the cycle continues. So the big focus, I suppose, from a nursing perspective is ensuring that mum is always kept well because she is the one who is caring for children who are, you know, moving to different life stages. So that certainly is one of our focus from a, a nursing perspective. I thought this was an, an interesting slide and it's again, it just highlights again the importance of healthy behaviours, the risk factors that everybody has to cons consider and the wider determinants. So for the healthy behaviours, these include a healthy diet, folic rich supplements, regular physical um, activity, promoting emotional well-being and ensuring cervical screening, sexual health checks and immunisations are up to date. And these are really important for any woman. But again, sometimes in rheumatology, we sort of tend to think only about the medications that we are prescribing. We have to think more about the, the overall wellness of this woman. The risk factors to consider are smoking, alcohol, substance misuse, obesity, long-term physical and mental health uh, conditions, as well as previous uh, pregnancy complications. So again, it's worth you know inc including those, certainly they're included in our nursing reviews um, when we are seeing patients. And then there's the wider determinants, relationship, support, education, housing, employment, financial stability. And um, they, they can all certainly be a concern for patients and sometimes you know, there are times when we that we might may be able to help and make sure that patients are seeing the right people, or maybe or we can refer them to um, uh, different agencies if required. An area I suppose uh, just to focus on again is the postpartum care, and um, which I suppose we all have this this ide ideally idealized. Um, view of this you know it's it's and certainly in the pictures and the movies this is what it can look like but sometimes in reality it can be a, a, a quite quite different what we're hoping for and we're all hoping in supporting women through uh, pregnancies is that they will you know we will be able to support them sort of in becoming mothers and um uh, having as normal a, fam a family life as 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 is possible so from our own work here in Dublin, and so sort of we do a, a, a rheumatology reproductive health clinic preconceptually during pregnancy and postpartum. Again, this is an area, I suppose, where um, care um, during pregnancy is quite intense. We have rheumatology and obstetricians um, uh, reviewing the patient and, and monitoring pregnancy as, as it progresses. However, once the baby is born, the patient is returned back to rheumatology. And as it's here really where we need to, as, rheumato as uh, rheumatology nurses, pick up this, this, this mantle. Um, we know that postpartum care can be ad hoc for a variety of reasons, you know, um, asking uh, somebody with a newborn baby to come in for a six week review can be a challenge, especially if you have been out of your pajamas for 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 those six weeks. So again, we have addressed that by having virtual uh, reviews for this patient cohort, and um, and you know it certainly in, in a busy hospital setting, attendance for those postpartum reviews can be a challenge. 
um, you know, parking, um, maybe having to bring your baby to the review. These can all um, sort of be a, a problem or even having other children who are sick at home. These are all considerations which we have to take into into. Um, or bear in mind for this postpartum period. And certainly here in Ireland, our, our rheumatology uh, cohort, have a, we have a very low rate of breastfeeding. And again, we're looking at that and wondering how we can improve those breastfeeding rates. So over the last two weeks, I've been asking my patients, you know, knowing that this presentation was coming on board, you know, what piece of advice would you share with other women? So this is some of their some of their 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 quotes. Um, the one of the ladies um, I re reviewed last week said, you know, get fit. Nobody tells you how physical it is caring for a new baby, and you know this lady has has juvenile idiopathic arthritis. So again, you know she is um, has has uh, a, a realizes now the amount of how physical it is the whole uh, caring for a newborn is. Um, Let's see, what else did they say? Again, let your rheumatology team know about your pregnancy plans. And they said, even if they don't ask, make sure if it's the, you know, it's you get that in, you know, don't leave that room without sharing your, where you want to be. Certainly, we are encouraging our rheumatology colleagues to ask the question. Um, but if they don't, you ask, um, tell them about your plans. And then keep asking questions until everything is clear. And again, sort of um, sometimes, you know, and not every question, not all the questions can be answered in one review. Sometimes you need to come back and see, be seen again, sort of just to clarify whether it's the medication management or how the process will be or how the care plan will develop it needs to be clear in your head. So again, um, I, I, that was, uh, I think, um, a, a key part of, of how we care for women in this, in this cohort. And also um, join reputable social media groups. Um, and keep an eye on, on reputable websites. Again, um, and again, I'm, I haven't seen them, but it's, patients do tell me that there are lots of um, Facebook uh, accounts out there um, with lots of different information on them. Certainly, if you do look at them, certainly come and ask and sort of clarify any of the thoughts that you have on them. But I certainly think that it, for any time, you know, in your rheumatology journey, be, I suppose, be careful about about where you're accessing your information in. So that is is where we're. I, that's where I'm finished now at this stage. So I'm happy to take questions if need be. That's great. Thank you so much. That was so interesting. It's. Uh, I mean, it's a very long time since I had my daughter, but my goodness me, how complicated it is now with the um, advent of the biologic drugs you know, in the 2000s. Um, so really um, lots and lots to think about there. So um, we've, we've heard in the previous recording um, about the changes in the guidelines from Ian. Um, and in spite of being able to stay on an anti-TNF now, which is, is certainly very different to, to the previous guidelines, um, at what stage, for example, do you have to think about stopping methotrexate? Because that is one of the drugs, of course, that we can't mm. take mm. when pregnant. So what, what what would your advice be there? And that, I suppose, comes back to your question about make sure you tell your rheumatology team mm. what your plans mm. are, because if you do have to come off it in advance, you need to know these things, don't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. So the BSR guidelines um, suggest that uh, metotrexate can be stopped at uh, one month preconce preconceptually. Right. Now, again, it used to be three, sort of, didn't it? It used to be three and yeah. certainly a long time ago, it used to be six. I remember when it was six. And oh. um, so again, and even this morning I had a I had a patient review and I shared these guidelines. So I would commonly share the guidelines with patients, email them to them or advise them to Google them again so that you can read the information around how that recommendation came about. As a, So um, the advice certainly now is at one month because we use the doses of, of metrics as we use in rheumatology are quite low. So um, that's where the guidance has changed in relation to metrics. And and has that changed also for men? Because it used to be that the man would have to come off methotrexate before yeah. trying to conceive. So, 
certainly the advice now is that men don't need to um, uh, come off metotrexate um, okay. at all. Um, well, that, again, that because the doses the of uh, and there, be, uh, there has been some, not a whole lot of studies in relation to men, but there has been some nice studies looking at sperm mobility and motility. So um, again, the, 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 the guidelines will say you, the, uh, men don't need to discontinue metotrexate. Okay. Um, uh, uh, if their partner wishes. Now, again, I, I, would, I would preface that by saying that somewhere along the line before they started metotrexate or maybe they started it five years ago or 10 years ago, they heard a different story. So sometimes it might take a little, you know, you, just a, um, it, it's worth going through the guidelines and the evidence of how that that recommendation was made. OK, now I recall when I was pregnant that um, my RA just kind of went away. Um, mm, and I was actually mm. well. And then uh, about six weeks after my daughter was born, it just came back and hit me with a vengeance. Is that mm. um, it, presumably if you're able to stay on medication throughout your pregnancy, that mm. you're less likely to have this postpartum flare that that is certainly common in, in yes. many women? Is, is, that, the is that the case? That is in the yes, absolutely in the main, and I think it would be safe to say, um, we tend to, uh, the flares of of um the postpartum flares are probably not as um severe as they were. I, like I remember when I had my own children, I returned to mater from um maternity leave exhausted, and I'm uh, two. Probably I was only back a week or so and I met a lady with, a, I mean, a severe postpartum flare and her baby was about six weeks and she required, she was unable to sit up. We transferred her to the bed. We had to um, feed her. She needed assistance, washing, dressing. And that was the most severe flare I had ever seen. Now, she had been off her medication for, for and there was no option of medication for yeah. her at that time. So, so mm. she had a very, very severe flare. And I think I probably, she she sticks in my mind because I was postpartum as well and just returning from maternity leave. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, imagine, mm. you know, as tired as I think I am, I don't, I'm not living with, with, a, with, a, with a chronic disease. Um, so I, that particular lady um, stuck in my mind. But certainly, you know, from certainly in from my experience of working with this group over the last 10 years, the flares are not as severe as um, I think we have better understand that postpartum period um, and the flares are not as severe. That's not to say you won't get a flare, but I think it's, that's why it's important to have that six week appointment with your rheumatologist so that we can catch um, any risk of flare before it yes. becomes a real trouble. That, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so uh, do you, as a, as a health professional, do you need to have completed any kind of course or is, the, is it advisable to complete any kind of course to work with patients in this way? Or is it just down to any well, health professional can give the advice, providing uh, obviously uh, yeah, they, they're up to date with, with the guidelines and so on? Absolutely. I think, you know, it, it's very much part of our nursing role to support you know with education and with care um, and our, our role in advocacy and sort of disease management that is very much part of what we do as rheumatology nurses however really all we're doing in a, in from a from a uh, in, in rheumatology reproductive health is applying those skills to this particular time in a woman's life now um on saying that um i know i deliver on uh, uh, reproductive health into our uh, postgrads because it's again it's an area of interest and it, you know sometimes um, our our nurses are very very keen to take this um, area um, of care up for patients except they're just a little bit worried that they could make a mistake. We have the guidelines now to support how we um, the advice that we give. You know, a lot of us are nurse prescribers, so we have that support in the guidelines. Um, and then you're keeping your patient in the center of every decision. So, you know, somebody might not want to continue on with a TNF inhibitor for whatever reason, but you support them in that decision and keep monitoring them so that they may need to change 
that decision or they might come to, you know, we might come to a different plan for them if anything happens. So again, it's about supporting them in their in their choices sure. um, and supporting them in their care. So again, while there is a specific course, like I did my master's, I did my research and I looked at rheumatology, reproductive health care. I'm doing a PhD now and my area of interest will be in reproductive health care, which is really important because I think, you know, we have to, I, it, it, we need to understand more about how care is delivered. We have we have the guidelines now, so they really have yes. supported our practice. But now I think we have to sort of get out there and sort of deliver the care confidently. Yes. Well, it, it sounds um, it sounds as though you're you're hugely uh, expert in this arena, and maybe one of the things um, that we could do uh, is I will come to you after this event and and get some good links and things, some of the things you've put into your presentation, and we can put those onto our website for health professionals mm. who want to find out more mm. about um, how they can support women better uh, in in this um, stage of their lives. Well, that's fantastic. That's been really interesting, um, Louise. So thank you so much for your presentation. Um, now, you can find the links to the guidelines and the uh, different channels on which you can watch back both uh, this recording and the one on the 27th um, on the NRES website. If you just use our internal search engine on our website and type in new pregnancy guidelines, you'll find all of this. And of course, you'll find the guidelines on the BSR website. So um, it just leaves me to thank you again, uh, Louise, for your very interesting presentation. Um, and don't forget um, that if you do need any help and support, um, you can come to NRAS. Our helpline is 0800 uh, 298 7650. Um, and uh, that is open and available from 9.30 to 4.30, Monday to Friday. So thanks very much. And we will see you on the next NRAS Live. Thank you, Louise.